Internet censorship in the Russian Federation is enforced on the basis of several laws and through several mechanisms. Since 2012, Russia maintains a centralized Internet blacklist known as the Single Register, maintained by the Federal Service for Supervision of Communications, Information Technology and Mass Media. The list is used for the censorship of individual URLs, domain names, and IP addresses. It was originally introduced to block sites that contain materials advocating drug abuse and drug production, descriptions of suicide methods, and containing child pornography. It was subsequently amended to allow the blocking of materials that are classified as extremist by including them to the federal list of extremist materials. According to Freedom House, these regulations have been frequently abused to block criticism of the federal government or local administration. A law prohibiting abuse of mass media freedom implements a process for the shutting down of online media outlets. Status Russia was rated, "...partly free", in Freedom on the Net by Freedom House in 2009 score 49, 2011 score 52, 2012 score 52, 2013 score 54, and 2014 score 60 and as, "...not free." In 2015, score 62, 2016, score 65, and 2017, score 66, where scores range from 0, most free, to 100, least free. Russia was on Reporters Without Borders list of countries under surveillance from 2010 to 2013 and was moved to the Internet Enemies list in 2014. Russia was found to engage in selective Internet filtering in the political and social areas and no evidence of filtering was found in the conflict, security and Internet tools areas by the OpenNet initiative in December 2010. Since at least 2015, Russia collaborates with Chinese Great Firewall security officials in implementing its data retention and filtering infrastructure. Topic Agencies Media in the Russian Federation, including the Internet, is regulated by Roskomnadzor Federal Service for Supervision in the Sphere of Telecom, Information Technologies and Mass Communications, a branch of the Ministry of Telecom and Mass Communications. Roskomnadzor, along with several other agencies such as the Federal Drug Control Service, the Federal Consumer Protection Service, and the Office of the Prosecutor General, can block certain classes of content without a court order, calls for unsanctioned public actions, content deemed extremist, materials that violate copyright, information about juvenile victims of crime, child abuse imagery, information encouraging the use of drugs, and descriptions of suicide. Other content can be blocked with a court order. Internet service providers (ISPs) are held legally responsible for any illegal content that is accessible to their users. Intermediary liability. Topic: History. Topic: Developments 2004 to 2012. 
In 2004 only a minority of Russians 8 of the population had Internet access. In May 2008, some 32.7 million users in Russia had access to the Internet almost 30% of the population. In 2012, 75.9 million Russians 53% of the population had access. In December 2015, most of the country, 92.8 million Russians, 70% of the population, have internet access. Following his visit to Russia in 2004, Alvaro Gil Robles, then Commissioner for Human Rights of Council of Europe, noted the high quality of news and reaction speed of Russia's internet media. Virtually all the main newspapers were available online, some even opting for web as a sole information outlet. Russia's press agencies, including the most important RIA Novosti and Etar TASS, were also well represented in the web. In April 2008, agents France Press noted that the Internet is the freest area of the media in Russia, where almost all television and many newspapers are under formal or unofficial government control." As reported by Kirill Pankratov in April 2009 in the Moscow Times, even discounting the chaotic nature of the web, there is plenty of Russian language material on political and social issues that is well written and represents a wide range of views. This does not mean, though, that most Russians are well informed of the important political and social issues of today. But this is largely a matter of personal choice, not government restrictions. If somebody is too lazy to make just a few clicks to read and become aware of various issues and points of view, maybe he deserves to be fed bland, one-sided government propaganda. In a November 2009 address to the Federal Assembly, then President of Russia Dmitry Medvedev acknowledged that Russia was ranked only as the world's 63rd country based on estimates of the level of communications infrastructure development. He stressed the necessity to provide broadband Internet access to the whole Russian territory in five years, and to manage the transition to digital TV, as well as the 4G of cellular wireless standards. In 2010, OpenNet Initiative noted that while the absence of overt state-mandated Internet filtering in Russia has led some observers to conclude that the Russian Internet represents an open and uncontested space." The government had a consistent, strategic approach to taking control over the information in electronic media. 2007 cyberattacks on Estonia and cyberattacks during the Russo-Georgian War 2008 may have been an indication of the government's active interest in mobilizing and shaping activities in Russian cyberspace. Topic: <laughs> Developments since 2012. Topic: Establishment and expansion of the blacklist. First countrywide judicial censorship measures were taken by the government in the wake of the 2011 to 13 Russian protests. This included the Internet Blacklist Law, implemented in November 2012. The criteria for inclusion in the blacklist initially included child pornography, advocating suicide and illegal drugs. 
In 2013, the blacklist law was amended with content, "...suspected in extremism", calling for illegal meetings, "...inciting hatred", and "...violating the established order". The law allowed for flexible interpretation and inclusion of a wide array of content. Popular opposition websites encouraging protests against the court rulings in Bolotnaya Square case were for example blocked for "...calling for illegal action", Dumb Ways to Die, a public transport safety video, was blocked as "...suicide propaganda", websites discussing federalization of Siberia — as Attack on the Foundations of the Constitution, an article on a gay activist being fired from job as well as LGBT support communities, as propaganda of non-traditional sex relations, publishing Pussy Riot logo, as insult of the feelings of believers. Criticism of overspending of local governor. Insult of the authorities. Publishing a poem in support of Ukraine. Inciting hatred, etc. A separate class of materials blocked due to extremism are several religious publications, mostly Muslim and Jehovah's Witnesses. Bans can be challenged in courts, and in some cases these appeals are successful. Proposals for further controls In 2015, Russia's Security Council proposed a number of further Internet controls to prevent hostile influence on the population of the country, especially young people, intended to weaken cultural and spiritual values." Prevention of this «influence» also includes active countermeasures such as actions targeted at the population and young people of the states attempting to weaken Russia's cultural values. Another initiative proposes giving Roskomnadzor right to block any domain within the RU TLD without a court order. In February 2016, the business Daily Vidomosti reported on a draft law by the Ministry of Telecom and Mass Communications titled, On an Autonomous Internet System. The bill calls for placing the domains, RU and ARF under government control and would make installation of the Russian state surveillance system SORM mandatory. <laughs> Ban on VPN and anonymizer providers A ban on all software and websites related to circumventing Internet filtering in Russia, including VPN software, anonymizers, and instructions on how to circumvent government website blocking, was passed in 2017. <laughs> Increase in Internet censorship According to data published by the Russian Society for Internet Users founded by members of the Presidential Council for Human Rights, instances of censorship increased by a factor of 1,5 from 2013 to 2014. 
The incidents documented include not only instances of Internet blocking but also the use of force to shut down Internet users, such as beatings of bloggers or police raids. Human rights NGO Agora reported that instances of Internet censorship increased ninfold from 2014 to 2015, rising from 1019 to 9022. In 2018 Russian government eventually introduced a country-wide ban on Telegram Messenger after a long dispute on handing encryption keys. In April 2018 Roskomnadzor blocked over 18 million IP addresses including subnets of Amazon and Google pools in an attempt to actually block the Telegram Messenger that had been using a method known as domain fronting. Over 400 Russian companies e payment processor Givi reported disruptions of services as a result of indiscriminate IP address bans introduced by Roskomnadzor. In May 2018, the Moscow court that issued the original order to start Telegram blocking on request of Roskomnadzor clarified that the order wasn't legally in force yet, since it has been appealed thus making the legal basis for Roskomnadzor block unclear. The ban led to a 1,000% increase in «personal VPN» sales in Russia. In October 2018 users in Russian republics have noticed that 3G and 4G Internet access is being switched off each time there's an opposition meeting. Some of them approached Roskomnadzor which explained that Internet access is not part of the «public service» in the legal meaning and operators can switch it off on arbitrary basis. In this case, the operators were disabling it on request from undisclosed security services and based on vague legal basis. As of 2018, FSB has also started lobbying against any external satellite Internet access initiatives, including proposals to introduce stricter controls against satellite Internet receivers as well as opposition against Roscosmos taking orders to bring OneWeb satellites to space. In December 2018, after repeated warnings, Russia's federal media censor Roskomnadzor fined the first search engine operator Google over 10,000 United States dollars for ignoring the national blacklist laws. Topic: Monitoring. Topic: SORM system. Russia's System of Operational Investigatory Measures SORM requires telecommunications operators to install hardware provided by the Federal Security Service FSB. It allow the agency to unilaterally monitor users' communications metadata and content, including phone calls, email traffic and web browsing activity. Metadata can be obtained without a warrant. In 2014, the system was expanded to include social media platforms, and the Ministry of Communications ordered companies to install new equipment with Deep Packet Inspection capability. <laughs> Data retention. The «Bloggers Law» passed July 2014 is an amendment to existing anti-terrorism legislation which includes data localization and data retention provisions. 
Among other changes, it requires all web services to store the user data of Russian citizens on servers within the country. Sites which did not comply with this requirement by September 2016 may be added to the Internet blacklist. Since August 2014, the law requires operators of free Wi-Fi hotspots e.g. in restaurants, libraries, cafes etc. to collect personal details of all users, identify them using passports, and store the data. The Yarovaya Law passed July 2016 is a package of several legislative amendments which include extensions to data retention. Among other changes, it requires telecom operators to store recordings of phone conversations, text messages and users' internet traffic for up to six months, as well as metadata for up to three years. This data as well as, "...all other information necessary", is available to authorities on request and without a court order. As of January 2018, companies registered in Russia as, "...organizers of information dissemination", such as online messaging applications, will not be permitted to allow unidentified users. Topic: Mass Media. The Federal Telecommunications Regulator Roskomnadzor can issue warnings to the editorial board of mass media and websites registered as mass media concerning abuse of mass media freedom, according to the Law on Mass Media. Such abuse can include extremist content, information on recreational drug use, the propagation of cruelty and violence, as well as obscene language. If a media outlet receives two warnings within a year, Roskomnadzor can request a court order shutting down the media outlet entirely. Topic: Internet blacklist. Topic: Legislation. In July 2012, Russia's State Duma passed a law requiring the establishment of an internet blacklist. The law took effect on 1 November 2012. The blacklist is administered by the Federal Service for Supervision of Communications, Information Technology and Mass Media and the Federal Drug Control Service of Russia. At the time of introduction the list was described as a means for the protection of children from harmful content, particularly content which glorifies drug usage, advocates suicide or describes suicide methods, or contains child pornography. In 2013 legislative amendments allowed the blocking of content, "...suspected in extremism." calling for illegal meetings, inciting hatred, and any other actions, violating the established order. This content can be blocked without a court order by the Office of the Prosecutor General. In July 2017, Vladimir Putin signed a bill, which took effect 1 November 2017, which bans all software and websites related to circumventing Internet filtering in Russia, including anonymizers and virtual private network services which do not implement the blacklist, and instructional material on how to do so. Topic Implementation 
The implementation of the blacklist as outlined in a government decree issued in October 2012, Roskomnadzor offers a website where users can check to see whether a given URL or IP address is in the blacklist, and can also report websites which contain prohibited materials authorities. After a submission is verified, Roskomnadzor will inform the website's owner and hosting provider. If the material is not removed within three days, the website will be added to the blacklist, and all Russian ISPs must block it. The full content of the blacklist initially was not available to the general public, although soon after it was implemented, a leaked list of blacklisted websites was published by a LiveJournal user on 12 November 2012. The searchable blacklist interface was made available as a full list by activists. As of July 2017 it includes over 70,000 entries. Reaction Reporters Without Borders criticized the procedure by which entries are added to the blacklist as, "...extremely opaque." and viewed it as part of an attack on the freedom of information in Russia. In 2012, when the banned content only included child pornography, drugs and suicide, the human rights activists have expressed fear that the blacklist may be used to censor democracy-oriented websites which indeed happened the next year and a Lenta.ru editorial noted that the criteria for prohibited content are so broad that even the website of the ruling United Russia Party could in theory be blacklisted. However, the idea was at that time generally supported by the Russian public. In a September 2012 Levada Center survey, 63% of respondents had expressed support for Internet censorship, though any kind of censorship is banned under the Constitution of Russia. The Electronic Frontier Foundation has criticized the blacklist, stating, F is profoundly opposed to government censorship of the Internet, which violates its citizens' right to freedom of expression. We are especially concerned about the censorship of independent news and opposing political views, which are essential to a thriving civil society. Russians who wish to circumvent government censorship can continue to read these websites via the Tor browser. Topic: <inaudible> Instances of censorship. A number of websites maintain lists of websites currently blocked in Russia, based on different sources of information. See also Media freedom in Russia Mass surveillance in Russia Internet in Russia Political repression of cyber dissidents Censorship of GitHub in Russia <laughs>